Urban Barkeep, Curtis. Feels weird not having Noah say Noah. Wow, we've been doing it this long? Anyways, Noah's not here because it's House Call Wednesday. House Call Wednesday, we're in the lounge. We got a Urban Barkeep Lounge. And uh, we do some blind tastings. We got a blind pool, just sample after sample, some provided by you all, mostly provided by me. We sample this battle, we nose, we taste, we score. This is America, we crown winners here. And uh, I look forward to seeing who wins, unless one or both of these samples is not that awesome. So we'll see, it's whiskey. I would say how bad could it be, but my Lord exists. So we will go down that path if God takes us there. Now that we're on such a high note, go ahead, like, subscribe. We are growing, the community's growing, and I love to see it. I love the feedback, mainly the positive stuff. So keep that stuff coming. Pretty sure someone called me a bum the other day and, you know, words hurt people. On the nose, that, that smells like a nice, good quality whiskey. I feel like I'm getting some rice spice in there. There's a lot of mint and brown sugar. A lot of like an oak and leather. This is going uh, drier, more on the darker side to where I feel like nine times out of 10 on this channel, I'm like, wow, that's really sweet. This one, I don't get the sweetness, but I'm kind of here for it. Yeah, brown sugar, mint, oak. Do a little cinnamon in there. When you start throwing in kind of the cinnamon and like this nice toasted oak in there, it's really tough for my mind not to go to kind of the cinnamon roll with nice vanilla frosting. I like it. I have no idea what I'm diving into. And that's, I guess that's the point. So cheers. That's hot. That tingles. Not overly powering. I feel you should retract that a little bit. The nose didn't lead me down this proof path. Definitely has some proof. Viscous, very drying on the tongue right now. Um, a little surprised. It didn't go a little deeper into the sternum. The hug's a little weak. Where you're like, come on, like get in here. Get in here, man. But yeah, uh, what's on the tongue is nice. It's still kind of like this minty vanilla um, leather. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a combo that I would want on on my plate, but it does, it works. I kind of like it. I'm more intrigued. I'm talking myself into being more intrigued in a, in a good way. Yeah, let's see what Sip 2 has. Sip two, I enjoyed more. Uh, there was a little more fruit that started to come out, like a, like a strawberry and orange. Still tagging along with this like brown sugar and leather and mint. Um, I like it. I feel like this is a high proof for some reason. And uh, I feel like this would also get a lot of people in trouble because it's pretty easy to sip. Not necessarily like a college football Let's just pour it and forget it. There's a complexity there that I don't think it's this like, sip it and forget it, but it goes down really easy. And if you told me this is above 110, yeah, I mean, don't, don't drink and drive. Yeah, I feel like that's, that's where we're, we're landing this ship. Landing the ship, man, just be better. All right. Class B, on the nose. <sighs> Dried cherry, like a butterscotch. Definitely a milk chocolate in there. I like this nose. I, with those tasty notes, I kind of expect it to be a little more fragrant and I'm, I am kind of trying to really get in there. But what I'm getting, I, I do really enjoy like a like a toffee or a peanut brittle. Going very dark, uh, some barrel char in there. 
This one smells older than glass A. Yeah, I, uh, I'm intrigued. Let's get it on the palate. Oh. I liked it, I liked it. And then this like fennel and licorice came through. I have a guess at what this is. Damn it. All right, what I enjoyed. A lot of caramel, something else there. So like a like an orange peel, which I do, I, I like it. You know, you do a little squeeze on the old fashioned. Red apple, but there is an intense fennel and licorice. And I, oh man, I just don't like it. I can't, everybody has their own palate, you know? Oh, it's wild turkey. I know it's wild turkey. Do I just take him out of the randomizer? Like, I just don't know what to do with myself. It has, it's just this licorice, anise, and fennel funk that I cannot get behind. Everybody talks about how great it is, and I'm sure it's really great to them. I don't think they're lying. I just splash myself. I'm a mess. All right. Sip two. Let's see, kind of knowing what we're getting into now. Does the anise calm down? Sip two. It's tamer. I do kind of know what I'm getting into, so that helps. When you don't enjoy the black jelly belly and it slips in, you are not pumped, especially if you're eight. It's it's good. There's a couple of tasting notes that just aren't for me. There's still a nice red apple and caramel that start to kind of come through. That barrel char still kind of sneaks its way to the palate, so you get a little bit of a smokiness. There's a nice dark chocolate in there. So there's notes in there that I wish would be more prominent than the black licorice that I'm getting. This, the, It's just not for me. Well, we still have the score. But here we are. That being said, we still do bang for the buck. So could it make up? I mean, it still has these really nice traditional notes that I would typically look for. And if these are substantial price gaps, maybe I would, maybe I'll go cheap. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Am I a new man? We'll get to that on the, on the next transition, the next chapter. We'll just do the chapter. All right, so we have some, some thoughts. Before we get into that, we'll do the scoring. So at Bourbon Barkeep, we have our scoring system to where we just do the senses, flash up some categories. That kind of helps us kind of silo ourselves to where what was the experience like. No price, I have no age. This is all blind, which I think we've said a couple times at this point. And uh, then we do bang for the buck. Then that's where is the $70 bottle worth 70, would I pay 100, would I pay 50, things like that. So we try and give you kind of both flavors, total them up, and see if if a, uh, maybe a budget whiskey, which I don't think these are, even though I don't enjoy uh, Wool Glass B, that was obvious. Um, I don't think it's a budget one by any means, I just don't think it's for my palate. So it's as simple as that. Glass A, as it sat here, there was this really incredible richness that really started to come out on the nose. It's really smooth. This is going to get someone in trouble. So pure sense of score, I'm going to go 80. Like I, it's great. Close to the good stuff. Fantastic. That seems like a stretch, but if this keeps opening up, it's going to creep into that fantastic category. But right now, sip one all the way through sip three, four, maybe eight, you don't know. It's opening up and it is, it's pretty good. I hope I have it. I hope this wasn't a sample provided by someone. And then also my, my wallet does hope that as well.
Glass B, on the other hand, I will be kind. I am going to try and put myself into Whiskey Tube's shoes, not just my shoes. I think that there are quality tasting notes. I think there is no alcohol burn at all uh, to where the viscosity is there. There's a richness there that's really good. If you removed that what I think is wild turkey funk because it's like Rare Breed has it, the Russell Single Barrel has it. I think that's the only wild turkey. I don't know why I'm looking. Like I'm sitting in a chair that takes up the whole thing. Get off of me. I think that's just where I'm at. That's my guess. I don't want to guess. That's not the point of the blinds, but that anise sticks out like a sore thumb to my palate. Um, but wrap it up. If I were to just kind of try and grade the other pieces of it, there's a lot of high quality pieces that I could see why people really like it. If you can get around this licorice and fennel uh, that I cannot, apparently, I may drink it all weekend just to sit there and take my medicine and try and enjoy it because it seems high quality. I'm gonna, for, uh, it's 60. Like I was tempted to give it the not for me category because it's just not for me. But that just seems too harsh for something that is a high quality pour for a lot of people. And if there's only one thing wrong with it, I can't sit there and just crush it. Like I, that's not what I try and do here. So take that for what it is. Now, bang for the buck. C, glass A, glass B. This is glass B's last chance at this point. I'm gonna look down and see what we got. Battle, 132. We got glass A, $120. Glass B, $60. Is glass A double? Would I enjoy glass A more just because that's my tasting profile? Yes. So how do I approach this? All right, glass A, does it taste $120? Take the matchup out of it. That's tough. Probably not, but as soon as you hit that $100 tier, you're like, okay, what tastes like that? Now I don't know age, I try and guess proof, just so I can kind of guess the experience, I guess communicate the experience to you all. So I think age may play a factor into that price, but in terms of the experience, 120, that's high. But it's really rich and it's really damn good. So did I get my 120 worth? Yeah, I did. So it won't be as high in that bang for the buck as typical when you get your money's worth. Would I pay more? No, I would not. I think 120, would be the ceiling. So I'll just go 63. 50 is kind of like our baseline. So I think I get my money's worth, but I'm not paying more than 120. Even if you told me 125, I'm all set. Like, call me cheap, fine. Well, I guess you can't call me cheap. It's $125. But everybody has their limits. 120 would be my limit. Is it appropriately priced? No, not knowing age, but I would pay it as my ceiling. Now, glass B, $60, half of it. What's not going to help this conversation is I don't like glass B in terms of that very prominent licorice. Will someone else? Absolutely. Is it very smooth? And could it probably stand up for a lot of blind matchups for other people? I would actually say yes. So I'm trying to kind of remove myself. So for $60, would I would pick glass A. Like I would just rather enjoy the pour and pay more. So this is a really tough matchup for me to kind of communicate. I'll go 65 for bang for the buck. So I'll have it score a little bit above. You're knocking on the door on the same smoothness, same richness, and you're half the price. It would probably score better if I enjoyed it more. 
Like, I, I think it just boils down to that. So the comments can sit there and say, well, it should be higher. And you're probably right, but for my palate, like, I just would struggle walking in and saying, yeah, I'll take the $60 bottle, because I wouldn't want to buy two of them. I would, two bottles for the one bottle, I wouldn't want the two bottles, so here we are. All right, bottle reveal, I gotta know. I, if this isn't wild turkey, dear father. <clears throat> yes, yes, but damn it. All right, glass A, four roses, single barrel, barrel proof, the OBSF. Do I need an octopus, Bravo, Sam, and Frank? Is that good? Um, at 111 proof. That's not fair. Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. One day, it's we're going to come and have a kumbaya, and I'm going to enjoy this fennel anise, apparently, but it ain't today. 110 proof, very close in proof. I don't know ages. I need to write that down. I feel like that would help. It's interesting. Four Roses, the first appearance. I think we've been doing this channel for over a year at this point. Four Roses, first appearance. Part of it is all these strains that they have with the OBSF. I don't even, I can't even make up the other ones. They're doing a lot of science. Good for you guys, but I, th I feel like it's just kind of confusing. So I don't know, maybe I'm alone. Maybe it's just because I'm kind of newer on the whiskey journey. Maybe it's laziness, but it's a, it's really good juice. Russell single, single barrel, I just don't know what to do with you. You're so good and so bad because of that one note and it's a prominent note. So like and subscribe. If you're not Wild Turkey Guy, welcome to the party. This is definitely the channel for you. It just doesn't do that well for me, but we'll do it again, I hope. I hope you come back and do it, do it again with me. And then since you know the bottle, like pour them with me. You know, we can kind of do this creepily together and we'll see. I, I feel like it helps. I watch other reviewers and helps me kind of learn like, hey, why is my tongue so dry? Oh, that's what raspberry jelly tastes like. Things like that. So just, just an invite, an open invite, if you will. Cheers.